Good morning, welcome to Abundant Life Church on this the 10th of March 2024. Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that we can gather together in your name. Thank you, Lord, for life, health and strength and for all that you've done for us. And we commit this time to you, Lord, that you may bless us, Lord, together here. Thank you, Father. We commit our time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Luke 22, verses 39 to 46. Verse 39. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The Lord bless his word to us. Let us come before him and worship him. Come on and celebrate his gift of love we will celebrate. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, for your care for each one of us. And we want to worship you now, Lord, with our gifts and offerings. And we pray, Lord, that you'll continue to take care of us because we need you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for taking good care of us thus far. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wednesday we have our prayer meeting at 8.30. We invite you to join us uh, for our prayer meeting as we seek the Lord together and spend that uh, time with Him and with one another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to each and every one on this, the 10th of March 2024. Yeah. End of uh, this month will be Easter, and uh, today is the second Sunday of this month. And uh, our reading was taken from Luke 22, uh, which was Jesus going to the Mount of Olives to pray. Right, and we're going to look at that uh, passage today. I've entitled today's talk as. Uh, what is usual for you? What is normal? What is usual for you? In the case of Jesus, uh, verse 39, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. This was Jesus' usual, to go to the Mount of Olives and to pray. And it was usual that his disciples would follow him, as he was the master, right? This was his usual practice, his usual habit, you know, when he was in Jerusalem. Of course, if he is elsewhere, then he would have to find another place uh, to pray, another place to uh, bring his disciples to follow him. And this was the example that he set for them. And, uh, but this time, it's a little bit different. There are cer certain aspects to this usual because this is his final usual, right? This is his last usual before he is led away to be tried, tortured, and eventually die on the cross for all of mankind all right so there are certain aspects that are a little bit different <coughs> to this usual <laughs> uh, so it's usual that he went out to pray and if he was in jerusalem he would go to the mount of olives all right that was the uh, usual for jesus in jerusalem uh, if he was in capernaum or some other town he would have a different place but this was his final usual and it was to the Mount of Olives right, that he uh, prayed, went to pray. And it was from the Mount of Olives that he rose up into heaven. So the Mount of Olives is a very important place. And uh, uh, if you go to Jerusalem, you know the Mount of Olives faces the temple, faces the temple. And Jesus, when he comes again, <laughs> will set foot, right, on the Mount of Olives and then walk over into the temple. Uh, but <clears throat> let's look at this. His instruction to his disciples, huh, on reaching the place he said to them, to his disciples, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He told them to pray, right? That was his instruction there, his 
first instruction, you know, after reaching the place. He will go and pray. And so he told them, pray that you won't fall into temptation. Yeah, you won't be deceived, you won't be tried. He, verse 41, he withdrew a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Right, he went away a little bit, a stone's throw away, you know, 10, 20 meters away, and knelt down and prayed. He did not pray in, the, in their midst, but he went a little bit away from them, so that he could be more isolated and be able to call upon his father. They could hear him, a stone's throw away is not a great distance, right? It depends on how strong your arm is, <laughs> right? You know, 10, 20 meters at the most. Huh? So, a stone's throw away, he knelt down and prayed. And his prayer was, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Not my will, but yours be done. This would not be a usual prayer that he would pray. He would pray for his disciples, he would pray for his ministry and so on. But this instance, because he is going to the cross, he's going to die for all of mankind. The destiny for which Jesus came into this world, was born into this world, would finally be fulfilled. He knew what was ahead and therefore he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. <coughs> he surrendered to the Father, not what I want, but what you, Father, want. There was no bargaining in this case, you know, not uh, 5% less, 20% less, <laughs> huh? or you know, uh, less one whipping, huh? or less one lashing of the whip, or one insult, huh? or less uh, one step uh, of carrying the cross, or anything of that sort. No bargaining. He surrendered fully and totally. He didn't tell the Father, oh, give me an extra hour. Huh? Uh, uh, with my disciples. No bargaining at all. There was no thought, no thought in his mind to reduce what he would have to face. No? Not one less insult from the religious leaders or not one less thorn in the crown that they would put on his brow. Not one less drop of blood that he would have to shed not one less no bargaining just total surrender to what was going to happen not my will but yours be done this was the usual of jesus to surrender in john he said i do i always do what my father is doing I don't act on my own. I don't carry out my will. But I surrender myself to my Father. And I do His will. I only do what the Father is doing. This is surrender. This is the, the way that Jesus led and gave as an example to His disciples. It's interesting, he told them to pray that you will not fall into temptation. This was his instruction to them. Pray that you won't fall into temptation. That you won't give way to your flesh. You won't give way to your tiredness. You won't give way to the ways of this world. Huh? And if you don't give way, who do you give way to? What do you follow? If you don't follow your flesh, if you don't fall into temptation, what do you fall into? You fall into God's hands. You fall into His will. 
you fall into his purpose you are surrendered to whatever he wants to do in your life not what you want but what he wants right that you won't fall into the weakness of your flesh your mind in Deuteronomy 6 5 we are told to love the Lord our God with all our heart our soul and mind with all of our being right all of our flesh even don't fall into temptation but fall into the hands of God fall into his love fall into his strength and his power He prayed and noticed that when he prayed, not my will, but yours be done, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. His prayer was not, give me strength. His prayer was not, help me, Lord, help me, Father, but not my will, but yours be done. And when he surrendered, an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. You know, there are times when we don't have to ask God for help. When we're doing the right thing in the right place, in the right attitude, he automatically comes and strengthens us. You know, just like uh, Mary, when her sister Martha Huh? Lord, tell my sister to come and help me. <laughs> huh? Big sister scolding little sister. <laughs> you know, Lord, tell my sister to come and help me. Jesus immediately replied, Mother, Mother, we are worried about many things, but only the one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that it will not be taken away from her. Mary did not have to defend herself. Jesus stepped in because she was in the right place with the right attitude doing the right thing. And Jesus was in the right place with the right attitude doing the right thing, surrendering himself to the Father. And when he surrendered himself to the Father, the Father knew what was in him. The sorrow, the surrender, the yielding and the anticipation of all the suffering and the bearing of the sin of all of mankind that burden that that stress that strain the agony the suffering the father knew that and sent an angel to strengthen him to give him strength to go through what his heart his mind his soul was straining already you know he, he was you could say almost at the limits of endurance at the limits of being able to hold on to his destiny hold on to the mission for which he had been sent from heaven to this earth for which he had lived 33 years but now was going to fulfill finally. He was hanging on and the Father enabled him, gave him strength through this angel to be able to hang on, hang on that little bit longer to fulfill the will of the Father in heaven. Now, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Take this cup from me, not my will, but your will be done. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Being in anguish, pouring out his emotions, his soul, his heart, pouring out everything that was within him being in anguish he prayed more earnestly he prayed with greater energy with greater effort greater strength greater surrender 
not my will, but your will be done. Nothing of his own. He didn't ask for a reduction in the suffering. He didn't ask for the reduction uh, in the drops of blood he would have to shed. Not for any lessening of the shame and embarrassment of hanging on the cross between two criminals dying a, a shameful disgraceful death as a criminal he didn't ask for any less than what was going to be ahead of him he prayed so hard his sweat dropped like blood we don't know what it's like to pray like that <laughs> with such great effort and agony until his sweat was so thick that it dropped like drops of blood such great effort and in a way suffering in that sense knowing what was to come surrender you know when you run a marathon it's uh, 42 kilometers 26 miles and some yards right and you have to cross the finishing line you know you you can't come up to the finishing line and <laughs> stop you have to cross the line right the timing is always after you cross the line not before right even if you are inside of the line you don't cross you know you you're not it's not counted you are timed when you cross the line and Jesus did not ask for lessening in time, in distance, in effort, in pain, in suffering, in insult. Everything that he had to go through, he did not ask for a reduction. He just totally surrendered. He prayed so hard. And the other one instance of such, maybe not so hard, but definitely hard prayer huh? was uh, King Hezekiah he was about to die huh? Isaiah came with a message from God I, I, uh, Hezekiah had been ill for some time then Isaiah came to him if you're interested in 1 Kings uh, chapter 20 verse 1 to 3 right? In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. Right? He was ill, not for one hour, not for two hours, but probably for a few days. He was ill. And then he finally came to the point of death. He had no energy, no strength, huh? no life, no desire in him. At the point of death and the prophet Isaiah son of Amos went to him and said this is what the Lord this is what Jehovah God in heaven says put your house in order because you are going to die you will not recover from your sickness from your illness put your house in order huh? appoint your successor huh? Write your will, sign your will. Tell your lawyers to prepare the will and sign it. Get ready. You are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He was on his bed. And he turned the other way to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He didn't ask his physicians uh, he didn't consult magicians and bomos and other people that he could consult his advisors he didn't consult anyone he immediately turned his face to the lord to the wall and prayed to the lord remember O lord how i've walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes 
And Hezekiah wept bitterly, bitterly. He's at the point of death. There is no future, there is no tomorrow. He is going to die. He wept bitterly. He cried to God. He wept bitterly. And what happened? God heard and God gave him 15 more years of life. <laughs> you know, now you, you can read on in 1 Kings 20. Right? God blessed him. God heard his prayer because he wept bitterly. When you weep bitterly, you all your strength, your heart, your soul goes into those prayers. He wept. Like Jesus, Jesus sweated, okay? But in that same way, he put himself into his words. He wept bitterly. He prayed to the Lord. He wept bitterly. Jesus sweated with all his anguish and might and strength. With all of his being, he prayed. Hezekiah, with all of his being, prayed. And God heard his prayer. The Father in heaven heard his prayer. The angel came and strengthened him. Enabled him to carry on. When he rose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Sorrow because he had told them, I'm going away. I will no longer be with you. Right? And yes, he, he told them, I'm going to send a comforter. You will not be alone. Right? Don't worry about what you say when, when you come before your persecutors, when you come before the judge, when you come before those that want to kill you. Don't worry about what you say. I will give you the words. But you know, words are words. When you are in sorrow, you know, when you are mourning for, the, for your loss, for your dearly departed, when you are mourning, words can never really touch your sorrow. Right? Yes, you know somebody cares for you and you are comforted by that, right? But that sorrow, that pain of someone leaving you forever that you can no longer see, no words can fully take away the sorrow, the pain. Yes, you can be comforted, you know you're not alone. But that pain, that sorrow isn't immediately taken away. Right? And yes, it can be helpful uh, uh, to know you are not alone. Somebody is standing there to help you, to strengthen you. That if indeed you, you are <clears throat> too sad and you really feel like giving up or something like that, you know, <laughs> you know you're not alone. Right? And, and it always helps. To know you're not alone. The worst thing to feel is when you are totally alone, nobody cares, nobody knows what you're going through. That is the worst, right? And uh, in some such uh, extreme cases, uh, I, I think that's, that's the point when some people, you know, end their lives. When they just can't, when they don't feel uh, anybody cares. But God cares, right? And Hezekiah, immediately after he prayed, Isaiah the prophet who had brought that message, before he had left the palace, before he left the room, you know, the king's uh, bedroom, God told him, go back and tell him, you will live, <laughs> right? And so Isaiah went back to him and, and told him, ah, God will give you... 15 years more 
you your life will not end god has heard your prayer god has heard your prayer in the case of the prayer of jesus the father had heard his prayer that's why the angel was there to strengthen him the angel was there to enable him to pray with greater strength greater earnestness know that we are never alone right? god is always with us so as with the usual of jesus the usual with god is he's always with us he's our shepherd who leads us uh, by the waters to green pastures even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death he is with us right he he never leaves us nor forsakes us so know that that is the word of god that is the promise of god to every child right so never give up because his word promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us no matter how desperate the situation he is always with us thank god up till now we have not had to face the extreme trial that some christians have had to go through uh, and uh, not give up god and face beheading uh, none of us otherwise we wouldn't be here today <laughs> uh, if you're headless you wouldn't be here today so thank god none of us had, had, has had to face that uh, but be assured god is with us to the end right whether we uh, however we end god is with us that is god's usual but what is your usual are you usually with god right so let us make sure that that is our usual to walk faithfully with him to call upon him whenever we face any testing or trial let that be our usual to be with god with all our heart our soul our mind and our bodies let us pray father we thank you for the example of jesus thank you lord that you surrendered yourself completely and totally not your will but the will of the father be done help us lord to pray like that also that your will may be done in our lives and that you may strengthen us to submit to you surrender to you that your will may be accomplished in each one of our lives to your glory to your honor thank you lord for the life of jesus because he submitted himself he has brought salvation to all of mankind and we pray god that our lives though may uh, we may not do such a great thing yet may our lives be to your glory to your honor may our lives lord have great purpose for you god thank you father we submit ourselves to you and pray the same prayer not my will but your will be done in Jesus' name, Amen. Let us uh, close this service at this time. Father, we thank you for being with us today. We want to commit to you our brother Harry, who's not able to be here. Be with him, Lord, in Serdang Hospital, in a hospital bed, number 32. We pray for your presence to surround him there right now. We pray for your angels to minister to him health and strength. Help him, Lord, to be strong in you. Help him to pray to you as Jesus prayed. Not my will, but yours be done. And indeed, Lord, may you hear his prayer. May you bless him. May you raise him up from that bed. Give him strength to walk 
give him strength to move freely in his left side. Heal him, God, from every infection in his body in the name of Jesus. We pray against every reaction to antibiotics, everything causing this itching. We pray against in the name of Jesus. We bind that itching and command it to leave his body in the name of Jesus. Set him free from all itching and discomfort in the name of Jesus. We pray for ourselves, God, that you may set us free from every bondage to the things of this world, to every discomfort, every sickness, every weakness and disease, known and unknown. Protect us and bless us, Lord. We pray also, Lord, for our country, Malaysia. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful land that you've given to us. Bless this land, Lord. Bless our Prime Minister, Diagong. Bless the ministers. Bless Parliament, Lord. As they meet in session, we pray, Father, you give the wisdom to the parliamentarians, to the ministers, to speak the right words that will help our country. We thank you, Father. You are God Almighty, who moves kings like you move the river courses. Nothing can resist your power. And so we pray for your sovereign power to be upon our land, to be upon our leaders, to be upon every citizen of this land. From Perlis to Sabah, from Kelantan to Johor. Thank you, Lord. Bless this beautiful land that you've given to us. Thank you, Father. Go with us and bless us in this coming week in all that we do. Watch over, take care of us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.